Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video for the topology series, we will be talking about interior, exterior, and boundary of a subset of topological space. So for those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And for those who have been here for a very long time, thank you so much for your undying support. And if you have any questions or clarification, please comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss on that. So we will start first with a formal definition of um, the interior point, the exterior point, and the boundary point. We're given with a topological space X, and then um, you have a, a, a subset of X. Now, a point X that is in X is called an interior point of A if there exists an open set U such that this X is an element of U. We will call the collections of all interior points of A to be the interior of A. So we denote this symbol to indicate that this is now the collection or sometimes we, uh, we use this symbol. So either of these two. A point X is called an exterior point of A if there exists an open set U such that this will hold. Now, if you notice, um, the difference between 1 and 2 is that your U here is an open set, just an open set. The number 2 is that if you have a, an open set U, it should be a subset of X minus A. So the collection of all exterior points is called the exterior of A. And then the symbol stands for like this. A point X is called a boundary point of A if for every open set U, so that contains X, um, the intersection of U and that A is not empty and the, inner, the union of U with X minus A is not also empty. So the collection of uh, boundary points of A is what we call the boundary of A. And we denote this symbol like a partial derivative in calculus. So from these three definitions, we will introduce the fourth one. Um, this is quite very important in the sense that we will use this to introduce some characteristic properties and results. We call this such as closure. So the closure of A, denoted by the symbol, is defined to be this one. So that means it's the union of the boundary and the in interior. So that's the closure. So if we're going to illustrate on these uh, definitions here, if we have this topological space X and um, we have um, the set A here, then um, you will find an open set U that contains the X. Okay, so that is the... Um, diagram representation of the interior point. Now, when we say exterior, if you have a topological space X, you have an um, a set A here. So you will be able to find an open set U outside of A that contains the X. Okay. And so when we say it's the boundary, so if you have a topological space X here, and then you have an A here, you will find an open set U in the boundary that contains the X. So we will have to take note that um, for any topological space X, so that's in general, um, you're given also with a subset A of X, then we have this equality here. That means it's a interior, the boundary, and the exterior. Um, this one, um, it looks like the union, so the um, it's supposed to be the union. But if you are, if you've seen this symbol, this represents the disjoint union. Okay, so as a consequence from the definition, we have um, eight 
things to uh, ponder and in fact these are actually uh, very easy to prove so I'm not gonna prove on that one it's just a pretty uh, consequence of the definition um, it says number one here that the interior is a subset of A and that A is a subset of the closure okay so that pre uh, that pretty follows from the definition <laughs> number two is that if you take away the closure of A from the topological sp um, space X, then um, you'll get the exterior. Okay, next is that the interior of a subset of a topological space is open and then the closure is closed. Now, we also say that A here uh, is open if and only if. Um, A is equal to the interior and it's close if and only if A is equal to the closure and then for number seven if you're given with an open set U and then that open set U is a subset of A and that A as actually is a subset of topological space X then um, that open set is a also a subset of the interior of A <laughs> next is if you're given with a closed set and that closed set contains the A, then the closure of A is actually contained in that closed set as well. So what's the meaning for this 7 and 8? So let's go back again to 7. If U is open set and U is a subset of A, then U is a subset of the interior of A. Meaning to say that this one, the interior of A, is the largest open set that contained in A. And uh, for number 8, it says here that if V is closed and it contains A, then the closure of A is also contained in V. So that means to say that closure of A is the smallest closed set containing A. So these are actually important notes that we have to remember in order for us to understand the succeeding properties and results and examples for this uh, topic. So for that, we will have our first proposition. It says here that if you are given with a topological space X and then you have these subsets here, Without loss of generality, your A is a subset of B and your B is a subset of topological space X. Then, um, the interior of A is a subset of the interior of B. And then, the closure of A is a subset of the closure of B. So, let's prove that. So, for number one, we know for a fact that the interior of A is a subset of A and that in the, in the assumption, your A is a subset of B. And remember, A here interior is open so what does it say about the note number seven according to the note number seven since this a here this a um, interior is open and that this open is a um, subset of B it follows already that the interior of a is a subset of the interior of B that's it how about for number two now, for number two, observe that we know for a fact that the, in the closure of B is closed. A here is a subset of B, meaning to say that A is also a subset of the closure of B. Then, by um, note number eight, it follows that the closure of A is a subset of the closure of B. That's it. So meaning to say that um, it's really important to take note on notes 1 to 8 because um, to prove the proposition above, um, number 1 is by note number 7 and number 2 is by note number 8. Okay, so let's have another proposition here. <laughs> Um, given that you have a topological space X and um, your A and B are subset of X. Now, um, it says here that um, the interior, the closure of empty is also empty. The interior, the closure of a topological space X is X. And then um, the boundary of the empty and the boundary of X is empty. Okay, number two. 
the interior of the interior is actually just the interior and the closure of the closure is just the closure so um this one and two here are actually um consequence of the definition so there's nothing to prove on this because it's pretty obvious we will just go with three and four now according to three um when you have the union of the interior it's simply as the interior of the union and the boundary of the union is actually the union of boundary and the closure of intersection is the intersection of the closure so let me label this for you to be able to remember that even if you might forget about symbols. So, um, the union of interiors is a subset of the interior of the union. And then, um, the boundary of the union is a subset of the union of boundary and um, the closure of intersection is a subset of the intersection of closures now for number four um the interior of the intersection is equal to the intersection of the interior. So, interior of intersection is equal to the intersection of interior. So, this is quite different um, from number three because um, the union is a subset. But when we think about intersection, then that's equal. And then, um, the closure of union is equal to the union of closure so let's prove on number three so let's start with the first statement here for number three observe that the interior of a is open and the interior of b is open so when you take the the finite union that is actually open and that's inside a union b Okay, so this simply tells us that um, the interior of um, A union with the interior of B, this is a subset of A, um, the interior of A union B. And this is by virtue of note number 7. So uh, for closure, um, observe that this one here is closed, that the boundary of A is closed. So B here is also closed. So if you take the finite um, intersection that's uh, technically close and it contains remember it contains a intersection B so by that this implies that um, the closure of the intersection is a subset of the intersection of the closure and this is by virtue of note number 8 now, um, we will prove the boundary. So, remember that um, this one here, um, the boundary of A union B, uh, remember that according to the definition by the boundary, it's the same as taking the closure minus the interior. Remember that the union of the interior is actually subset of the interior of the union. This one here. So, meaning to say that I can have a subset of A union B minus. That's A interior. This one. And so, uh, by set theory, I can have A in um closure minus the interior of a and this minus b closure minus the interior of b and so this is already the definition of the boundary and uh, union the boundary of b 
Okay, so we will prove number four. So I have here these two things that we have to prove. So note that both this interior is a subset of A and that A is a subset of the closure. And same, the interior of B is a subset of B and B is a subset of the closure of B. Okay, so uh, remember that um, A interior and B interior are open sets. So if we are going to take the finite intersection, uh, so that's gonna be open and uh, remember this one here um, the intersection of the interior is a subset of a intersection B so meaning to say by virtue of a uh, note number seven this is going to be this one So that means uh, we have initially that the intersection of the um, interiors uh, is a subset of the interior of the intersection. However, observe that A intersection B is a subset of A. And um, A intersection B, that's also a subset of B. So what's the implication for this? Uh, by the note that we have discussed earlier, um, this implies that the interior of the intersection that's a subset of this one a and then um, the interior also of the intersection is also a subset of the interior of B so by basic set theory when this um when this thing here is subset of two things then um, you have a subset of the intersection so, meaning to say that we've shown this um, here, and we also shown that one, this uh, tell us the final th thing that this will hold. That's it. So, another um, the last identity for number 4 that we're going to prove, um, observe that this A here is a subset of the closure. This B here is also the subset of the closure of B. So it follows to say that A union B is a subset of the union of the closures. Okay. So meaning to say that the closure of A union B is a subset of this one. So this is by note number 7. However... Observe that our A here is a subset of A union B and our B here is a subset of A union B. So proposition earlier, the closure of A is a subset of the closure of A union B. And the closure of B is a subset of the closure of A union B. So these two things here simply tells us that the... Um, the union of the closure is a subset of the closure of the union. And so, we've shown this one and we've shown this one which simply tells us conclusionally that um, the closure of A union B is the same as the union of the closure. That's it. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there. So just so you know, this video is only for the introduction for the interior, exterior, and boundary of a subset of topological space. We will continue with this topological series. So keep updated and um, thank you so much for all your support. Thanks guys and have a great day. Bye for now.